Fun five facts. Early developments during World War II. HUD-like devices were first developed for the military during the early 1940s. HUD-like devices were first developed. Yeah, that says it twice. <laughs> um, heads you up can display. say that again. Yeah, you can say that again. <laughs> heads up displays under advanced technology that evolved from the reflector site used in military fighter aircraft before World War I. The gyro gun site was a significant improvement that added a radical that moved based on the aircraft speed and turn rate to calculate the lead necessary to hit a target ac accurately. I actually didn't know how development started that far back. Uh, I thought it was a more recent technology. So it says during the 40s, UK's telecommunications research establishment combined the image from a radar tube with a projection from their standard gyro gun sight on a flat windscreen area and later in the gun sight. Groundbreaking innovation for night fighter pilots the Royal, Royal Air Force. This technology allowed pilots to see their surroundings better and identify enemy planes. And then it says, uh, after World War II, advancements continued. The U.S. Navy became interested in using a uh, mock heads-up display in 1955, uh, designed to help pilots focus on their eyes while monitoring important information uh, from the aircraft they're doing flight, such as altitude and airspeed. However, it took some time before the HUD was successfully implemented into, air into aircraft as further research and development were needed to refine the technology. So again, pretty, pretty early. The world's first HUD was aboard a Royal Navy aircraft. So I guess the Buccaneer was the first airplane to have some sort of HUD, which first flew in uh, 1958. It doesn't really say much about the capabilities of it, but that would be it, which obviously one of the early jets. Um, let's see. The, the newer generation of HUD technology. So I kind of, I guess what we have today uh, HUD technology developed into basically helmet-mounted sites or helmet-mounted helmet mounted displays. So, you know, as a as a HUD cripple, so I, most of my flying experience was without a helmet. I, I have very limited helmet experience, but WAG's play in DCS, like the whole, the helmet and mover called it cheating, but by being able to see all the symbology I would see in the HUD at all times while I'm looking around, you know, like trying to fight that yeah. actually took a lot of place of the feel mm -hmm. if, that, if that makes sense. Cause oh, yeah. I could, I could fly and fight the airplane based on the numbers, which with just a HUD, you know, you have to use feel, right? Cause if you turn yep. your head, the HUD doesn't go with you. So, but the, right. uh, the helmet mounted, you know, display is the, uh, is the HUD that goes with you, I guess, wherever you want to look. So Wombat, did you fly with the helmet at all? No. Mm -mm. No experience, none. And no. mover, did you have any? Did you did you fly with an F sixteen? No, just the Hornet. We got it in the sim. Okay, so I got spun up in the sim, and then we never. I left. Never got you. So I uh, flew it there. Did they ever go helmet on those jets that you were those Hornets? I don't think. Yeah. So. Did they? Did they? Yeah. I can't remember. They were just, well. I mean, Donkey, you left like six on. months after me, but right. They were going to it because, um, and then eventually, for sure, when they got the C models, but they were going to it because I got fitted for one and I was in the sim doing it. Mm. Interesting. Um, yeah, getting trained up for it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Um, I wish I had more experience with it, but uh, historically, the development of helmet mount displays dates back to 1962. Again, I didn't realize it went that far back. Mm. So, comp okay, they used a compact CRT based monocular display however the first operational use of helmet mounted displays was by the south african air force in the 1970s with their mirage aircraft equipped with a locally developed helmet mounted site this early adaptation of helmet mounted display technology demonstrated its effectiveness in combat particularly in off bore sight attacks which we kind of just talked about um, it's also extremely useful obviously in the air to ground air to surface whatever and then it talks about uh, number five, the F thirty or four. The F thirty five is equipped with the latest uh, gen of helmet mounted display. So uh, it's developed by North of Grumman and Raytheon. It's a network of high resolution infrared sensors distributed around the aircraft's airframe. These sensors provide unobstructed spherical coverage, functioning autonomously, autonomously without requiring pilot input or aiming. Uh, I would like to try that. That sounds awfully cool. 
Uh, the DAS offers three fundamental functions, missile detection, tracking, aircraft detection, and tracking, and providing imagery for cockpit displays and pilot night vision. These capabilities are crucial for maintaining situational awareness in high threat situations. So, yeah, the F-35 has a pretty amazing helmet, so I've read. It's all part of the uh, sensor fusion that the airplane employs. Number five, <laughs> this one I thought was kind of funny. I did fail my hearing test uh, the first time this weekend for my flight physical, but then I passed. So maybe I could use a helmet mounted uh, <laughs> a helmet with, with uh, some of this technology. So the Striker 2 manufactured by BAE offers a unique 3D audio feature with intelligent active noise reduction. This technology provides pilots with 360 degree directional audio, allowing them to hear threats about their position. That's cool. Accompanied by color symbology. So it goes on to say you can customize that, but uh, we don't have that helmet here in the States, but this technology offers 360, 360 degree directional audio enhancing. Repeated itself. My apologies. Uh, from enhancing situational awareness to providing precise targeting capabilities, HUDs have revolutionized both military and civilian aviation, paving the way for more advanced, safe and efficient flight operations. This evolution, which started in the 40s, signifies, signifies a move towards more intuitive, user-friendly interface, decreasing pilot workloads, and enhancing uh, safety. Wombat, do you guys have HUD in the... Is there, does the Airbus have a HUD? Do they have models? Uh, have they, I believe they do. We don't have it. So we don't use the HUD. So. Yeah. So I, I started flying in my military career without a HUD. And I don't, Wombat, you probably, you probably have more of the blend, but... You know, it's all what you're trained in. I flew the T-45A and I CQ'd on it and it had a, it had a, a HUD that didn't tell you anything really. Uh, we didn't use it for instrument flying or anything, but you know, I transitioned for me, it was kind of an easy transition from uh, no HUD to HUD. And then obviously when I went back to no HUD flying a T-3 Alpha, that was a kick in the brain. So it, uh, the HUD definitely just the ability to look outside but still see the information you need to see is is huge for SA because you're not in your cockpit. And then obviously the helmet, being able to look around, see threats while seeing your own uh, ship flight parameters, I think is huge. It did mention the art in the in the article, but I also found that CAS, man, when you're doing CAS with a helmet, the whole exactly what are we talking about on the ground right so your flight lead the guys on the ground it just alleviates so much of that confusion because my real world cast experience was without a helmet and it was a lot of you know literally talking eyes on you know contact hey this unit of measure looking at my little green and black FLIR. okay it's an l-shaped field and then like looking outside the cockpit so i would argue probably an air to ground it's probably a much more of an SA builder than than air to air, but I don't know. I, I'm oh, yeah, now I'm, sure I'm a awesome HUD cripple. I'll reason. take all the technology. What do you guys think? I mean, yeah, absolutely. I want one in the Airbus. In the Airbus. One. Mover, did you got did you got y'all have them in the seven three? The captain does. So Nothing when you there. get your type rating you fly with it uh in their left seat, but it's just the captain. Uh the seven eight I think has dual HUDs. But mm. not on the FO side on the seven three. Have I mean, you guys tried nice. it? I mean, I've flown the I've flown the seven three sim with the HUD. It's it's nice. I mean, it I works the say. same. It works so, the so same. That's what, you know, that's you, what, you have the flight path vector. You just put the thing on the thing. Essentially, that's what they use in lieu of the Cat three coupled approach. So the mm -hmm. Auto Land. They didn't pay for the Auto Land certification, so you can take it down. To, I think fifty feet with yeah, the actually, wow potentially with the HUD. Over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. yeah right out would, 50 feet. Yeah. The Airbuses we fly don't have it. And it is, it's so, it like, I don't know, the human. But you guys can do Cat 3 Auto Lands, right? I mean, you have that. Do you do know what that is? That, you know, when it's, it's, that's when the weather's really, really scary and bad. The plane could land. You have no, that? no, no. It won't, no, no Auto Land for us, dude. No. You don't have Auto Land? No. I mean, the airplane will do it, but. Uh, well, no. can it? That's the thing. Will it? Yeah. Are you sure? Well, that's what the that's what all the captains I've flown with have told me. They're like, "Can you believe?" They, and they showed me how to do it. I'm like, "Ah," but huh. the the whole you know I, 
I've actually flown a couple down pretty close to, to men's and it's pretty crazy. Just that, just that little eye shift from inside to outside. Mm -hmm. Like I really miss the HUD where I'm always outside and I'm just waiting. Right. So, cause it does, it's, you know, it's a, <laughs> it's a, your eyes have to shift and focus and it, it does make a difference. So I don't know. I yeah. mean, where I'm at, we'll never see it, <laughs> but <laughs> at least in the civilian world in my military days are over, but, uh, but yeah. I don't know. Any reattacks on that? Buy an RV8, and they people are developing hoods for those things. Are they really? Mm -hmm. T Bear awesome. was talking about some dude that had like the it would use the TCAS and do ranging yeah. for like gunshots and aim a uh, little simulated aim nine and stuff. Yeah, um, well, I, I like the whole man. The whole uh, you know, I just HUD technology being that old to me is pretty amazing because I thought it was new. Yeah, it's pretty cool.